Hey, what's happening guys? It's Matt Ogus from mattogus.com. One of the most frequent questions I get asked is, Matt, how do I fix my lagging chest? So first, I think it's really important to understand why your chest might be lagging in the first place in terms of its development. So I made a list of the top 10 reasons you have a lagging chest. Let's get started. Reason number one, in my humble opinion, it's got to be training age. I can talk about this one today as well, keep it quick. It's really funny. Um, you all get asked all the time from teenagers, 15, 16, 17 year olds, Matt, why is my chest lagging? And automatically I'm thinking, how many years has this person been even lifting weights? So automatically, just assuming you have average effort, average genetics, average pretty much everything, your chest will be bigger five years of lifting versus four years of lifting, which will be bigger than three years of lifting, which will be bigger than two years of lifting. So if you're someone coming to me and you've only been lifting for a few months, like why do you think your chest is lagging? You've only been lifting weights for X amount of time. So assuming that you're doing most things mostly right, the older you get, the more older you are in your training age, the most likely the bigger your chest will be. Assuming you're actually hitting your chest on your exercises, you're giving it appropriate volume and so on. I'll just let you guys know that I've been lifting now for almost nine years. Here's a picture of my chest when I had just begun. Here's a picture of my chest after, you know, three, four years of lifting. And here is a picture of my chest just a couple years ago. New clip. Reason number two you have a lagging. Ready? Reason number two that you have a lagging chest, it may be your genetics. Unfortunately, you can't really determine uh, before you're born what cards are going to be dealt. It's just automatic. It's something you can't control. Your parents put their DNA together and boom, you're born with the set of cards. And sometimes you just might have really bad chest genetics. There's lots of uh, guys, even in fitness, that have just not that good chest genetics. Uh, and that's just the way it is. They might have good, good everything else or whatever, but it may not really be in your cards in terms of genetics. Now, here's the thing though. If your training age is just a year or less, how do you really know what your genetics are? How do you know what your genetic limits are? You really don't know what they are unless you've been training smart for a long, long time, like years, 5, 10, 15 years. You really don't know how you're going to look until you've actually done everything right in terms of the training, in terms of nutrition, in terms of how many years you've been training. So don't just throw the I have shitty genetics card in your first year of lifting or even in your second year of lifting. Give it lots of time um, and there's a good chance that even if you have kind of subpar genetics in terms of the chest, if you're doing everything else right, you can still build a decent chest on yourself. All right guys, point number three why your chest may be lagging. Uh, don't take offense to this. Don't get emotional with this one, please. And I obviously mean no offense, but it may be that, look, you, are weak. You're weak. You just might not be strong. And this could tie into training age. Um, because if you're in your, if you've just been lifting weights for six months, you're not gonna be that strong in the chest exercises you choose. It's as simple as that. You're not gonna reach uh, 80 to 90% of what your natural potential is in your first few months of lifting. It's gonna take you quite a while. It, it's, it's, I'm already nine years in, and I'm maybe just around 80 or 90% of my potential. So keep that in mind. It took me eight or nine years to get to like, to get to like 90% of my potential. So if you're in your first year of lifting, second year of lifting, you're, I mean, chances are you're not even doing things right. But if you're just in your first or second year of lifting, you are probably nowhere close to your best bench press whether it's dumbbell or barbell or whatever chest exercises you enjoy doing and you actually hit your chest at, there's a good chance that you're nowhere close to where you could be. So in other words, if you can only bench 135 pounds for a set of five, there's a very good chance that when you're benching 225 pounds for a set of five and then 315 pounds for a set of five, that your chest will be much bigger when you're stronger. Same thing goes with other movements, your flat dumbbell press, incline dumbbell press, the movements that hit your chest properly for you and you enjoy doing, when you get stronger at those movements, 
you will have a bigger chest. All right, guys, number four. Low chest training frequency. Low chest training frequency. What exactly do I mean? You could, look, if you're a natural lifter, when you, work, when you lift some weights, your protein synthesis will be elevated for, let's just say, 24 or 48 hours, usually around 36, whatever. If you're on steroids, obviously, it'll be elevated for a longer period of time, and that's where the bro split really, really comes from, where you're working chest one time a week. As a natural lifter, you could be training chest between one to three times a week, for example, and you don't even have to be hitting it at a whole number. You could be hitting chest 1.5 times a week which is actually is what I recommend. So say you're training your chest one time a week, try training it between one and two times a week, which means you'd be working off of a non-seven day based week. Just because there's seven days in a week doesn't mean that your training schedule has to revolve around a seven day week. So let's just say you start working your chest once every six days, for example. That's definitely better than one out of seven, right? And you, if you really want to take it up, you can do one out of five or you could hit your chest every third day, for example, right? That's probably, that's probably about the most I do. I mean, maybe once every other day. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, but you could easily increase your training frequency for your chest, which will one, maybe help you get stronger in the movements, which will then also affect some of the other points that I'm about to list. But if you're only training uh, chest one time a week, that's 52 chest sessions a year, right? Whereas you probably could have done a hundred or more chest sessions and had a hundred sessions of protein synthesis for your chest in the year. And if you're training once a week in terms of your chest, you only hit about 50. So that's reason four. All right guys, number five, why you may have a lagging chest. Number six reason why you may have a lagging chest. Low volume per session slash accumulated volume at 60% plus. What actually am I talking about here? Okay, low volume per session, what I'm talking about is volume that's in the 60% of one rep, one rep max range and above. So generally best bodybuilding ranges in terms of how heavy, load, intensity. Intensity doesn't mean how hard you're going. Intensity means percentage of your one rep max. Uh, generally 60 to 80, 60 to 75 percent is probably the best for bodybuilding. So we're not just talking about <clears throat> you're not doing enough reps and sets in any sort of range. We're talking about reps and sets that's heavy enough to simulate growth. So 60 percent to generally 60 to 80 percent is a nice sweet spot for bodybuilding. So this kind of ties into the other points as well because obviously you can't have a ton of accumulated volume over the years if you've only been training for a few weeks, a few months, a year or two. You're gonna have much higher accumulated volume at bodybuilding rep, uh, bodybuilding loads. Uh, you're gonna have much greater accumulated volume at bodybuilding loads once you've been lifting for X amount of years. And also, of course, you have to look at how many, what's your volume per workout in these rep range, in the 60, you know, 60 to 80 percent load range as well. What this means is individually for you, specifically you, is that you may not be training your chest enough, period. You may not be doing um, enough sets, etc. You, you want to be training at the highest volume that you're able to recover from. Uh, so you want to be training uh, up to the point where it's the maximum amount of volume that you can handle and recover from, uh, so that you can constantly be pushing the envelope. And if you're only doing like let's, uh, just a few sets per session for chest, um, then you're not going to be really pushing it. So points five and six kind of tie into together. Point five being simply not enough training volume. And this can mean per workout, it can mean per week, per month, and in fact, it sort of means all of those things. It's multi-dimensional, it's multifaceted because it's not just about what you're doing in one workout, it's kind of blends in together with how many, you know, how much, what's the volume per workout week, month, 
uh, which gets me to my next point, which could be that you simply have a low accumulated volume total. Accumulated volume. And this also ties in with training age because you can't have accumulated a ton of chest volume in five weeks, in one year, in two years. You'll have accumulated a lot more volume uh, after five years of lifting compared to three years of lifting compared to one year compared to a week. And I don't just mean overall volume. Okay, there's a difference between me doing push-ups and me doing 300 pound bench presses. There's a difference in intensity. Intensity meaning the load, the percentage of one rep max. So we're talking about volume in rep ranges. Usually we're talking about you know, the six to 12 area or the 60 to 80% uh, of your one rep max. Um, generally, if it's, if it's much less than this, it's, you're, you're simply not lifting heavy enough. Uh, if you're lifting much heavier than this, then like, it's, it still technically works. It's not like it doesn't work. It's just that once you're lifting 85, 90, 95% one rep max, it's hard to bring in tons of volume at really high uh, intensities. You'll have to have longer rest periods. And anyways, we're getting into a more complicated topic. My main thing is that it could be you just haven't been putting enough volume for workout week month over the years in this uh, intensity range, the bodybuilding uh, rep range, you could say. All right, guys, point number seven, why your chest may suck and be lagging, no offense. Bad form. It's simple, you may just have bad form. This may tie into your training age, you may have been only lifting weights for a week, month, year, or two, and that could be a good reason why you just haven't perfected your form. In terms of actually using your chest to the best of its ability in full range of motion, this covers these small, like bottom reps, top reps, etc. It's best for you to be training a muscle in its full range of motion that you can actually do, that you're capable of doing. Obviously, if going past this hurts, don't do that. So use your full range of motion on the majority of your chest exercises. Use good form, which means the elbow is in the plane of the chest. So when the elbow gets lower or higher than the plane of the chest, generally other muscles are doing much more of the work. So if you're doing a chest press, whether it's incline, decline, flat, most of the time, the shoulder is back, retracted. Basic bench technique, right guys? Elbow in the line of the chest through a full range of motion. That's generally good form. So if you're spending tons of time using bad form, you're not really maximizing your chest gains. Number eight, why your chest may be lagging, right? Not enough calories. Now, this is a funny thing. You just may not be eating enough. It's simple, right? If you're constantly at a maintenance of calories or even less where you're practically losing weight, that's not really putting your body in an environment that's gonna help you grow muscle. It's really hard to gain muscle unless you're a beginner in a caloric deficit. So if you're constantly at maintenance, you're not giving yourself enough calories to put on new muscle, new tissue, because it has to come from somewhere, right? Muscle doesn't just boom, come out of nowhere. You actually have to provide it with the building blocks, the calories, protein, carbs, fats, everything's essential. So it's simple, but you just may not be eating enough. So you want to be, if you want your chest to be getting bigger, Perhaps aim to gain, you know, one to two pounds a month, uh, depending on your size, etc. All right, guys. Number nine, why your chest may be lagging. <laughs> it's funny. We're getting down to the nitty gritty, though. You just may have not be putting any effort. It's simple. Like you just may just really be dreading your days, not really pushing yourself. Obvious. This one is like so obvious. It's funny that I even have to mention it, but. Yeah, if you're obviously, if you're not putting in effort, you're not gonna be growing your chest to the best of your ability. All right guys, last but not least, while you may think you have a lagging chest, this is a different one. It says too much body fat. The more body fat you have, for guys, it's, it's just harder to see what muscles you have. So if you have tons of fat, especially if your fat distribution says put fat here, you may not know that you have a great chest. You may not know that uh, once you take that fat away, you actually have a really nice chest. So if you're at 20% or above and you don't think you have a great chest, see yourself in the uh, 10 to 15 rep range, you might have a much more defined, much more aesthetic chest. So try losing some body fat if you have 
if you're well above the uh, aesthetic range of you know 8 to 12. Try to get closer to the 8 to 12 range and you may notice that you don't have a lagging chest, you might have a great chest. So, so guys, if you have a lagging chest, rewatch this video, pinpoint which problems you have and make a plan of action to fix it. What's up, Tyson? If you haven't noticed when it comes to building muscle, building any muscle, it's all about the compound effect. It's not necessarily about how awesome one workout is or a week's workout or a month's worth of workouts. It's about what are you doing on a regular basis to slowly just add pennies to the penny jar and over time you'll be building a better chest. So it's really about over time what you're doing, cover these 10 points and five, and I'm sorry to say, but five, 10 years from now, it may take you a while to build a much better chest than you have today. All right, thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bonus number 11 guys, poor exercise selection slash order. Now what do I mean by exercise selection? Generally, your compound free weight movements are the best chest builders. You can handle the most weight, put the most tension on your chest. Uh, so I'm talking about barbell and dumbbell pressing, whether it's slight decline, whether it's flat, whether it's incline, or even chest dips, for example. Uh, those should be the staples of your chest workout, especially the dumbbell pressing. Uh, what do I mean by poor selection? That could mean that you're prioritizing things like dumbbell pullovers. It could mean that you're prioritizing chest flies uh, with a cable or a machine or whatever above your compound chest pressing. So uh, this can mean you're not doing enough compound movements, too much uh, isolation movements, or it could mean you, you may think that it's better to you know pre-exhaust your chest, for example, and really. Uh, work the hell out of it with your isolation movements for your compounds, that's another huge, huge mistake and it could be a reason why you have a laggy chest. Last but not least, bonus number 12. Trying to utilize advanced techniques when you're not an advanced lifter. So doing things like rest pause sets, pre-exhaustion, um, myo reps, uh, all these different uh, extreme stretching, etc. all these different advanced techniques for chest growth when you haven't gotten yourself up to, let's just say, you know, a 315 bench. Uh, if you're still struggling trying to put up less than, you know, 200 pounds on a bench press flat barbell, then are you really in the right place for advanced techniques? You've only been lifting for a year, two years. Save the advanced techniques to people that have been lifting smart for five, 10 plus years. If you haven't been lifting for five or 10 plus years, Stick to the basics, get yourself to a high level of strength in the dumbbell and barbell pressing movements. And then, once you've done everything right, maybe try out some advanced techniques.